Right, okay, all the um, more recent videos have focused on topic two, demand. Uh, this one is based on supply. Okay, so supply is the number of goods and services that firms are willing and able to sell at a given price at a given period of time. So basically what it means is right here, right now, at the current prices, what are firms prepared to sell to people? Okay, they'll be willing and able again. So you'll be willing to, you know, to spin a profit in it for you. And you've got to be able to, you know, have you actually got the resource to produce supplies in the first place? Now, when we draw a supply curve, it's the opposite way to a demand curve on, on the price quantity axes. So a supply curve is upward sloping. Okay, now there are lots of reasons why, but for now, just think about it as it's linked to price. So P1, P1. Okay, so as price increases, firms become more willing and able to supply. Okay, so if, if this was a market supply curve, a simple way of thinking about this is that there might be some firms that can't produce and achieve profits at P1, but at P2, they might be willing and able to do it. So when price increases, supply will increase, and we call this an extension in supply price falls and supply will fall and we have a contraction in supply okay at lower prices less chance to make profit so firms will start to leave the market so what we have along this curve is a positive relationship price increases the market supply will grow if price falls the market supply will fall and think about the example we've used in class. Think about um, labour. When you supply your labour, you do it to earn a wage, which in effect is your profit, the reason why you go to work. So more of you would be willing and able to supply your labour at a high price, such as P2, that you would be at P1. Now remember that firms exist to make profit. And if you work out the profit that firms earn, you look at their revenue, their total revenue, minus their total costs. So along that supply curve, we assume ceteris paribus. The only thing that's changed is the price. So the costs remain fixed. Okay, they're not, they're not changing in effect really. So what it basically means is that P2, there's a higher scope to make profit than what there would be at P1. But what we now need to think about are shifts in a supply curve. So what we looked at along the, along the supply curve was price reasons why supply might change. What we're now going to be looking at are non-price reasons. Okay, so look at this diagram here. We've got an outward shift in supply. Look what this means now. At the same price level, we've now got a higher supply than what we had before. So we're looking at non-price reasons why we get this outward shift in supply. Okay, now there are a whole host of reasons that could cause this. Um, let's just take a few. So reasons this could include down production costs. So basically what we're saying here, it's become cheaper to produce goods and services. So at P1 now, there's more firms that can actually make a profit than what they could do before. Lower production costs. It could be, for example, that P1 is, let's say, £2. And at Q1, the cost of production of each item is, let's say, £1. So at the moment, everyone that's been sold will generate a profit of a pound. Well, for all we know now, production costs have fallen to 50p. So more firms are incentivized to produce because they can now make more profit on everyone sold. It's £1.50 now rather than the old £1. 
So think about what firms have got to pay for. They've got to pay for their sectors of production. Remember, firms are, are entrepreneurs. It's enterprise. They pull together land, labour and capital. So simple examples, if you're looking at a restaurant, they've got to pay for land resources. This could be food, it could be fuel, it could be the physical land where their premises are based, so it could be rent or buying that land. You've got the cost of labour, whether this be um, people that work in the restaurant cooking the food, the chef, for example, the cleaners, the waiters, the waitresses, the people that serve behind the bar. It can even boil down to the, the accountant you've got to employ to manage your books for you. So anyone that works with this will create a cost for these costs fall, and ultimately there'll be a um, outward shift in supply. Now linked to that one, we'd also look at what we call indirect taxes. Now an indirect tax is a tax on goods and services. So it, it, it's paid for by the business, if you like, on every good or service sold. So the most obvious example would be something like VAT, so 20% on most things. So what you would argue was if the government were to cut indirect taxes, it will in effect again cut the cost of production, which will lead to an outward shift in the supply curve. Now again, even further linked to that one, subsidies. Now a subsidy is the opposite of a tax. It's where the government allocates money to different firms or individuals across the economy. So let's say, for example, the government wanted more people to exercise. So if there's more supply, well, you'd like to assume there'd be more demand if there's more, more available for people to buy. But the government could do, they could give a big subsidy, a big handout of cash to gyms across the country. And what that will do, it will mean that um, there'll be a bigger incentive to produce gyms, which you can now make more profits at the same price than what you could do before, which will hopefully mean that more people start to exercise. Uh, other things that you could be looking at as well is access to resources. Okay, so let's imagine you're uh, a supermarket. Your ability to supply apples or fruits, other fruit and vegetables, for example, milk, whatever it's going to be, dairy products, will depend on the availability that you can access. So if there was, for example, an exceptionally good harvest of fruit, it would mean there's more fruit available to supply in the first place. Um, if the firm can now access more workers, then ultimately they're more able to supply more. The last one I'm going to throw into the hat will be a growth in productivity. If you find better ways of producing goods and services at lower costs, for example, then what it will mean again is that the cost of production fall and get an outward shift in the supply curve. Now, if supply moves to the left, to the opposite of what we've just drawn, so S1 to S2, what we've got now is an inward shift in supply. So again, it's non-price reasons why we get an inward shift in supply. So at P1, we've now got lower supply than what we had before. And when you think about it, the reasons for this will be exactly the opposite of what we had for the outward shift. So this time supply will have shifted inwards or fallen due to higher production costs, an increase in taxes, lower subsidies, reduced access to resources, or a lower access, well, a lower level of productivity in the business.